Today we're going to learn about Plutarch, who lived from 46 to 120 AD. He was an ancient Greek philosopher. Now when you hear the words ancient Greek philosopher, you think Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Why isn't Plutarch mentioned with these great names? Well the answer to that question is Plutarch is actually considered a middle Platonist, which is just a stage in the development of Plato's philosophy. So while he didn't develop an entire philosophy on his own, he continued Plato's in many different exciting ways. In fact, Plutarch is a preeminent philosopher for this period. He defended freedom of the will and immortality of the soul. This age was a rejection against skepticism and ended in the development of Neoplatonism, but we'll get more on that later. Plutarch was born to a wealthy family in 46 AD. He was very well educated in the Academy of Athens under Amanoas. There he studied philosophy, mathematics, rhetorics, and physics. However, morality and ethics was his true passion, which we'll see more of later on in his life. He did have a wife and two kids, but besides a few mentions of them in his writings, they aren't too important to his philosophy. What is important is how Plutarch traveled. He visited Greece, Sparta, Corinth, Alexandria, and Rome. In fact, he loved Rome so much that he visited there twice and eventually became a Roman citizen. Aside from his duties as chief priest as the Oracle of Delphi, Plutarch was more of an active and social philosopher. He gave many sermons and wrote many essays. These works are now known as Moralia. It's composed of 78 issues and spoke on issues of vice and virtue, immortality of the soul, and freedom of the will. Now what's interesting about Plutarch is when you get more into his beliefs and kind of how his thinking worked. He believed in God, and he also believed in the immortality of the soul. He believed when God created our soul, it was made out of a material evil, yet it was filled with reason too. And reason has guided our soul, but it is still the root of all evil in the world. He also believed that the soul was immortal. In fact, he actually hints at reincarnation in one of his essays when he says, The soul, being eternal after death, is like a caged bird that has been released. If it has been a long time in the body, and has become tamed by many affairs and long habit, the soul will immediately take another body and once again become involved in the troubles of the world. Remember when I said that his family wasn't important to his philosophy? Well, that quote actually comes from an essay he wrote after the death of his only daughter. So, maybe I was wrong there. But still, that is the only instance of his family ever really factoring into his philosophy. You could also say that Plutarch was a bit at war with himself. He believed in religion and the pure idea of God. However, he completely rejected superstition, not to say that all religions are composed of that, but at least in that day it sure did seem so. Anyway, he believed that God made himself known to us through direct revelations that we had no control over. And when speaking about various religions, whether polytheistic or monotheistic, each religion was talking about the same God, but just with different names. Plutarch also wrote Parallel Lives. This is his most famous work, actually. It doesn't include much of his written philosophy. Actually, instead, it is a series of biographies of famous Greek and Roman citizens. And what it does is pairs them up and lines them up to compare each person's vices and virtues. Plutarch has influenced many different people throughout the ages. Ralph Waldo Emerson is a huge fan of Plutarch and Moralia. He said that it was impossible to read Plutarch without a tingling of the blood. He called Parallel Lives a Bible for heroes. Another, more modern influence for Plutarch, and probably more recognizable, comes in the famous series The Hunger Games. One character in there is called Plutarch Heavensby, and is based off this Plutarch. Although this is probably just because Plutarch is a Greek name. It doesn't seem to have any meaning to his philosophy. Well that's Plutarch in a nutshell for you. If you're interested, you can find out more about him by reading Moralia or, or Parallel Lives. Moralia is more of an easy read since it consists of 78 different essays on any sort of topic. You don't have to read the entire thing. And don't forget to check out plato.stanford.edu for more background information on Plutarch. Bye everyone.